Good morning, everyone. My name is Dr. Miller, and the SCP we're going to be studying today is SCP-847. Object Class, Euclid. Special Containment Procedures SCP-847 is to be kept in a reinforced, modified humanoid containment chamber for the purpose of ongoing behavioral studies. The room is to be fully furnished with a bed, dresser, couch, table, chair, full-length mirror, sink, shower, and toilet. The floor of the chamber is to be constructed with one centimeter exposed beams of copper, which can be electrified remotely to a minimum of 50 kV potential. A 50 centimeter squared safe zone at the right rear corner of the containment chamber is to remain free of copper beams in the case of personnel inside containment during disabling of SCP-847. No meals are to be provided. All personnel posted to SCP-847 must be armed with a shock baton rated at 30 kV or greater. Only men, which has been stricken from the document, XY males, identifying as such, are to be assigned to or permitted within a 50 meter radius of SCP-847. After the results of Experiment 847-G, upon order of the Ethics Committee, intersex, transgender, and non-binary personnel are prohibited from working with, handling, or approaching SCP-847 for their own safety and well-being. When assigning personnel to SCP-847, Preference is to be given to men who are not sexually attracted to women. Description SCP-847 is a human female mannequin, 156 centimeters tall and 27 kilograms in mass, constructed of human hair and an unknown composite fibrous polymer that abrades and shatters similarly to porcelain. Exploratory laparoscopy of SCP-847 shows the presence of internal structures resembling an incomplete set of bones, organs, and major blood vessels, composed of the same polymer. Small amounts of black, volatile resin, similar to plastination compounds, leak from the eyes and damaged regions of the mannequin. SCP-847 has always been, which has been stricken from the document, is normally at some level of disrepair with shattered areas on the torso, head, and limbs. See Addendum 847-B for details. SCP-847 is animate and moves with erratic stiff motions while shuddering to maintain balance. It demonstrates different behaviors depending on the genotypical sex and identified gender of nearby humans. These behavioral patterns are grouped as Pattern Z, Pattern Y, and Pattern X. Pattern Z behaviors occur when there is no human within 50 meters. SCP-847 remains inanimate and silent 99.5% of the time under these conditions. When animate, SCP-847 will dress in any available clothes, stand in front of any available full-length mirror, and return to an inanimate state, adopting a pose that showcases the outfit worn. It favors clothing which is designed for young women, and which leaves ample skin exposure. On rare occasions, SCP-847 will scratch short messages on nearby surfaces with a finger, or, depending on the state of repair, with an available appendage. Messages written since entering Foundation custody are found in Addendum 847-C. Pattern Y behaviors are adopted when there are male subjects but no female subjects within 50 meters, independent of intervening obstacles. Initial stage behaviors involve emitting vocalizations resembling high-pitched whimpering gasps and adopting more provocative poses. Occasional shudders can be observed during this time. After three to five minutes of the initial stage, SCP-847's behavior enters a secondary stage, during which it becomes fully animate, approaching any male subject, adopting a hunched pose and appearing to look up into the subject's eyes. Vocalizations during this period become more frequent and in longer duration. Subjects are able to handle and freely alter the pose of SCP-847 during this time. When posed, it holds the new pose as balance allows. The final stage of pattern Y behavior occurs approximately 5 minutes after all subjects have left the 50 meter parameter of SCP-847. It will then shatter select portions of its body 
and or extract internal structures. Once shattering or extraction is complete, it emits sobbing vocalizations and returns to pattern Z behaviors. Pattern X behaviors occur when any female subject approaches within 50 meters, independent of intervening obstacles, whether male subjects are present or not. SCP-847 will emit vocalizations resembling distressed grunts and screeches, immediately animate and physically attack the woman. During Pattern X behaviors, SCP-847's strength and speed are greatly increased with sprints of up to 45 km per hour and exertion of 40 kN of force having been measured. During an attack, SCP-847 will occasionally shatter an appendage, usually a finger or a toe, in order to produce a sharp edge. Furthermore, plastination resin is released from its eyes, mouth, and shattered sections of its body. Resin falling in open wounds results in a quick hardening of soft tissues that spread until the victim's body reaches a composition of a similar polymer as SCP-847. Following plastination, SCP-847 will harvest selected body parts from the victim corresponding to the damaged sections of its own body. It will fuse these parts to its body via the resin. Not all damaged sections will be repaired in this way. Upon completion of harvesting, SCP-847 will return to pattern Y or pattern Z behaviors. The resin produced by SCP-847 has been shown to have its anomalous plastination effects occur only when applied to soft tissues of women. The resin has no effect on cadaverous, non-human or male tissue. Application of high voltage electricity in excess of 10 kV will cause a temporary solidification of the resin, resulting in SCP-847 becoming inanimate for approximately 5 minutes, regardless of the behavior pattern expressed at the time. Addendum 847-A Recovery Log A federal human trafficking investigation led to the discovery of SCP-847 in the basement of an abandoned department store in Las Vegas, Nevada on August 23, 1983. Surrounded by partially disassembled and broken non-anomalous female mannequins wrapped in plastic sheets, FBI agents on the scene witnessed SCP-847 exhibit pattern Y behaviors. Initially thinking it was a trafficking victim, agents moved in to assist. SCP-847 then switched to Pattern X and attacked one of the agents. The agent subdued SCP-847 with her stun gun, leading to the discovery of high voltage electricity as a tool for containment, and was evacuated from the basement. The unusual incidents unit was informed of the situation. Foundation agents were contacted through regular channels and SCP-847 was secured. Despite signs of human habitation, the trafficking victims were never found. Addendum 847-B Shattering Event Log Notable shattering events are listed below. Due to the shattering and harvesting behaviors of SCP-847, it has significantly altered appearance since entering Foundation custody. See photos and log for different stages of completion. Date. August 27th, 1983 Description of Event SCP-847 shatters chest after researchers leave containment Researchers Notes Researcher was heard to verbally note unrealistic proportions in the containment chamber during initial placement. Researchers are advised to avoid any verbal commentary regarding SCP-847 while in the containment chamber. Replacement harvested September 12, 1983 Date May 14, 1984 Description of Event SCP-847 shatters nodes after Experiment 847-E with D-8334 Researchers Notes As part of regular testing protocol, subjects are not informed of SCP-847 shattering behavior after the subject leaves the containment chamber. See partial debriefing interview below. Is there anything about the appearance of SCP-847 that you've particularly noticed? You mean, other than being a living, breathing mannequin? Well, uh, her nose looks funny. You know, 
how those nostrils just flare out like that. They're just pets, not covered nicely. Did you say anything regarding SCP-847 s nose to it? Nothing. She's not someone you can talk to. Doesn't talk back, but doesn't listen either. Replacement harvested October 20th, 1984. At the conclusion of this harvest, female D class testing with SCP 847 was prohibited on the order of the Ethics Committee. Date April 21st, 1995. Description of event SCP 847 tears out all head hair and extracts liver after experiment 847J with D 13928. Researchers notes. See partial debriefing interview below. Did you make any comment about SCP-847's hair? <laughs> I know, right? The 80s are over. Heck, that was almost 70s. Please answer the question. You got it all on film. Nah, I didn't see much of anything. I was just hell impressed with an actual living doll. <laughs> Real fine piece of ass, too. I suppose I can't take her drinking, though. Being plastic and all. And me still locked up, of course. Well... Thank you, D-13928. We're done here. You're welcome. You think we could run this experiment again sometime? Hair replaced July 13th, 2013. Liver replaced August 12th, 2013. Date, March 1st, 2005. Description of event. SCP-847 tears out all pubic hair during a period of pattern Z behavior. Researchers notes. Of note is that it is the only shattering event that has not been linked to a pattern Y period. SCP-847 has not attempted replacement. Date, September 23rd, 2013. Description of event. SCP-847 extracts brain, eyes, clavicle, and shatters hands. Researchers notes. SCP-847 had become fully intact under researcher Tyler Jensen's supervision. In the interest of reducing SCP-847's capabilities, a test was authorized with D-7294, chosen because he had been convicted of multiple murders of a sexual nature. Shattering event lasted 45 minutes, with SCP-847 emitting novel screeching vocalizations throughout. Partial debriefing interview follows. D-7294, please state your opinion of SCP-847. Cute. It knows its place. Please elaborate. The way it squeals and growls, it knows what it's there for. Pity it does a lousy job. In what way? It doesn't follow orders. Yes, you can pose it, humiliate it, but it doesn't do much more than mule anyway. I had to break off a finger just to see if it mattered. It didn't. You know, it's ironic. You dream your entire life of finding a woman who's that compliant, that devoid of thought, that helpless to your every whim. And when you find her, she's just a useless mannequin who can't do anything. Thank you, D-7294. We're done here. Guards, please escort D-7294 back to his cell. Addendum 847C Message Log Below is a log of all messages written by SCP-847 to date while in Foundation custody. Attempts to communicate with SCP-847 have met with failure. SCP-847 does not use words when vocalizing and does not respond to questions asked by personnel, whether spoken or written. August 25th, 1983. Come back. October 13, 1984. I can do better. March 9th, 1986. Where are you? May 18th, 1988. Where is my prince? July 21st, 1990. I can change. October 5th, 1996. You can own me. February 12, 1998. 
You are my master. June 8th, 2001. Don't leave me. April 25th, 2004. Whatever you want. April 15th, 2009. 1979 to 2009. April 16th, 2009. Too old. April 17th, 2009. I can be young for you. December 3rd, 2011. What's wrong with me? March 8th, 2013. I'm sorry I'm worthless. August 31st, 2015. Daddy, I'll be good. Okay, I think that about does it for today. Thank you all for listening, if indeed you still are, and you are all dismissed. Goodbye. I would like to give a special thank you to Andre Bichert, Pierce M. Hamlin, Muslim Wookie, Jax Merrick, Caleb Bowen, Slump God, John O. Porter, Captain Gorge, Tyver Ball, Cody Tench, Cheese Whip, Dips McGee, and Dr. Mortis. Thank you all so much for your support. It's greatly appreciated. If you would like a special thank you at the end of each of my videos, and some other cool stuff as well, go to patreon.com forward slash the Vulcan. Thank you.